Hey there folks, I am the Mighty Plantain. Thanks for checking out this video. I've got one here. Um, this is Banded Brewing's Green Warden. Now I heard about this a while back and I don't know if I'm just now finding it or if it's been out for a while. <laughs> Let me back up for a second. I don't know if it's just now hitting shelves or if it's been out for a while and I'm just now finding it. Um, this is actually from Banded Brewing Company in the, the Pepper Roll Mill in Biddeford, Maine. Two row malt, English crystal malt, Chinook hops, Maine forged spruce tips, Saco River water and yeast. That Maine forged spruce tips part is what got my attention way back when I read about this stuff. It seems like over a year ago, maybe even a couple years ago, um, yeah, ale brewed with spruce tips and ale of mythic proportions. I remember this being like a huge deal, and I seem to recall there being at least one other spruce tip beer. I think it's uh, Dogfish Head's Pennsylvania Tuxedo. Anyway, um, I remember reading about this a while back and, and being excited about it. But I just recently found it because I finally got my ass into uh, Meridians in... Fairfield, Maine, which is a, a beer store close to me, but I just, I, I don't find myself going by it that often, so I don't stop in as often as I should, and one of the reasons I wind up avoiding it is because, because I don't stop in so often, I go in and I find 20, 30 beers that I really want to try, but I haven't seen before, and it drives me nuts having to narrow it down and make a decision because I've only budgeted for like six individually pulled beers and as reasonable as their prices are for individual beers i you know i can't draw enough money to pay for three or four six packs so i have to limit myself to one but i look and i'm like oh my god there are so many beers that other local beer stores aren't carrying and i want them so it it's uh, it's a constant struggle trying to get all these local beers without actually making trips to the local breweries. Because when I say local breweries, you're looking at a 30, 40 minute, an hour long drive to a lot of these places. For me, living here in, in central Maine, um, you know, we've got a lot of local breweries and there's a handful of really great ones that are within striking distance but you know even places like Bigelow one of my favorites is is at least a 30 minute drive to Skowhegan and then a 30 minute drive back you know it's it's not a quick trip for me anyway uh, that's way more than I really needed to share about the local beer buying experience but I just gotta say that there are tons of great breweries in Maine and there are tons of beers that I just don't get into my hands because I don't make the trips to the <laughs> to the local shops as much as I should. Um, you know, we've got the Damon's family of stores, but they only seem to really be stocking what's selling heavily lately. So even Clown Shoes has been a big, a, 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 a tough find for me. I go to the two, three Damon's stores that are within 20 minutes of me, and they've got no clown shoes beers, but if I go to Stompers, which is hours right away, eh, 45 minutes to an hour anyway, in Holden, yeah, there's a handful of clown shoes beers there, but nobody's getting the newest shit. And actually, I didn't see a single clown shoes beer at Meridian's last time I was there. Hmm. Anyway, just... A little insight on the, the local beer scene here and why you're not seeing as many local beers on the channel as, as I'd like, uh, I guess. Um, <laughs> or I'm more buzzed than I want to admit and getting distracted. Um, <clears throat> so, let's get back to Banded Brewing's Greens Warden, which, again, I heard about at least a few months ago, maybe even a year or more ago, and I'm just finally now getting around to grabbing, I think was my, my very long-winded point there. And I believe I have you to thank, Bill G, if you're, if you're watching, I believe you were the first person to bring this particular beer to my attention. Um, again, it's been a while, so...
got a halfway decent head on that. Not as frothy as I would have liked, but then again, I didn't pour it that aggressively. It is slightly effervescent. That is a nice hazy yellow beer. I mean, it's got a bit of an orange or amber tinge when you get up here, but mostly yellow. A few bubbles coming up through still, so slightly effervescent. Got a bit of a woodsy, earthy aroma. Maybe a hint, a hint of like a woody. Hint of a woody smell and, and, and then I think I'm getting mint. But mostly a woodsy, a woodsy slash woody, and there's a difference between woodsy and woody aroma. Yeah, <laughs> like on the very tail end, there's like this really weird, slight hint of mint. That's odd. Nice medium mouthfeel. Good earthiness to it. Um, definitely getting some graininess. 5.6% ABV. Doesn't say anything about the... Um, anything about the IBUs, because I'm, I'm not getting a lot of hoppiness to it, which is fine. Um, unfiltered, unpasteurized, and vegan-friendly. Well, vegan-friendly, there's a plus. Although I don't... Is that really a concern with most beers? I can't imagine a lot of meat or animal byproducts making it into most beers. Anyway, um, try not to segue too much here, folks. Very earthy and woody. The spruce is there. It's definitely there as it settles on your palate. So at first when you sip it, it's like a walk through the woods. It's this nice green space. You're getting that earthy, woody smell translated directly into flavor. And if you've been for a nice walk in the Maine woods, you know what that, how that smell can actually rest on your palate and give you a little bit of a flavor in your mouth. It's not as weird as it sounds, folks. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then there's definitely a, as that, the beer itself washes down your throat and, and settles on your palate, there is a spruce flavor that comes through. It's got a nice medium mouthfeel. I might have mentioned that before, but... <clears throat> Pardon. <clears throat> mm. And the spruce is definitely there, but it takes a, a second or two to, two to kick in. And there's almost a, a bit of a sappy finish to it. And then some hoppiness comes through in, in, after, in the aftertaste. But it's like this piney aftertaste, but a muted piney taste, which is probably the spruce. So it's definitely you're definitely getting the distinct flavor, aroma, everything of the spruce. And you're getting this overall experience of a, a walk in a nice heavy green space like the Maine woods. Um, overall, I'm digging it. I mean, 
I'd like to say it, it's taken me to a place that, that's nostalgic for me, but I can take a walk right out my back door now and walk through the main woods and get the same experience. So, but, but if I was still living in, in a more urban area, I would say that this reminds me of days of living on the farm because when I lived on the farm, I used to do a lot of, um, Anyway, I used to do a lot of wood harvesting in the in the fall. That was kind of my it was an expectation for living there. We hayed in the summer. We got wood in the fall. We split it and stacked it all winter. Anyway, um, again, there's this big nostalgia piece that's coming in on this beer for me. Even though I now live in a place where I can just go walk in the woods, literally, like right out my back door. Anyway. It's a great beer. It's got a slightly unique flavor in the spruce tips and the spruce that's coming through. <clears throat> Overall, I'm going to hit it with a four and a half out of five. It's getting some more points because of the mental images that it's conjuring. It's also getting extra points for being easy to drink on top of the fact that it's got a, a flavor that you're not going to find in a lot of beers. Um, again, I, I believe when I first read about this, it was like the only beer that was going to have spruce tips. But now there's at least two, maybe three or four out there that are going to do it as well, that have them as well. Um, but yeah, four and a half out of five. Great beer. It's just not hitting that wow experience for me. Um, Maybe its uniqueness would have been a 5 out of 5 if I had had this before I had the Dogfish Head Pennsylvania Tuxedo, which is another spruce tip beer and some similar experiences. But overall, it's a 4.5 out of 5 for me. It's, it's a great beer. I'm about to start repeating myself as if I haven't segued and run off at the mouth enough already on this one. But that's just what I have to say about this beer. Hit me up down below in the comments, the email link. Love to hear what you have to say about it. While you're down there, don't forget to like and share this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Till next time, folks, thanks for listening to me ramble. Cheers.